The tropics remain quiet, but for how long? That's the question on everyone's mind and what we'll try to answer in today's video. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Monday, September 8th now, and uh, we are now a full week through the month of September and basically right at the peak of hurricane season. September 10th technically is the exact peak, but uh, we're in it, folks, and everyone's wondering, well, what in the world is going on in the tropics? There's really nothing being monitored by the National Hurricane Center. Uh, is it going to come back to life? Is the season over? Well, uh, you can go ahead and answer some of that for you right now. Hurricane season definitely is not over. We are all too familiar with late September storms. October storms can bring big impacts. And uh, obviously, you know, a lot of time to go here before we write off the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. So you're always up to date with the latest model data and a breakdown of that data. Always have it for you here on the channel. So with that said, let's just go ahead and jump right on into things today. And uh, spoiler alert, this one's going to be a bit of a short video, not because I have anywhere to be per se. I'll I do, but uh, more so, there's just not a lot to talk about out there right now, but we'll give you the important information that we do have. Now, looking at satellite imagery, you can definitely see we do have areas of storminess into the Atlantic. We've got this big frontal boundary off the East Coast, stretching even all the way into the Gulf, uh, trying to fire up some showers and storms but none of that really looking like it's going to become tropical. And we also have a couple little waves here. We've got one little wave approaching the islands of the Antilles. We've got another big wave down here. And uh, then obviously some just disorganized showers not far from the Bahamas. So there is convection out here, but... The big thing right now, the big limiting factor is right here, and that's dry air. We've got a ton of dry air in the Atlantic right now, especially into the main development region. I'm Actually, this little blob here that's trying to get going right now uh, is what was 91L before it went poof. And funnily enough, now it's trying to maybe uh, get a little bit more juice in it. But notice the problem right in front of it. It's all of this yellow and orange. This is dry air that it is just barreling into. That's what killed its chances and what basically all of our models missed. Um, almost all of them had it developing into a storm and it just did not do so. Uh, now, there's another area down in the south. This one in a slightly more conducive environment, but still um, you know, not being monitored by the National Hurricane Center and uh, a very low rider right now. So uh, generally speaking, whenever you're that low, it's a little bit harder to form a storm as the Coriolis force isn't helping you out as much. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, that's that's the problem right now in terms of, uh, you know, if you're a storm in the Atlantic and you want to form, it's just a lot of dry air choking these things out. And because of that, uh, yeah, sure enough, the National Hurricane Center not monitoring anything over the next seven days in the North Atlantic, which is, um, I won't say unprecedented, but very uncommon for the peak of hurricane season to see nothing being monitored. It does not happen often, but this year, at least right now, it's the same way. We'll see if by September 10th, two days from now, it's the same way. Uh, but uh, yeah, right now looking pretty dead. I'll tell you though, we do have some more waves rolling off of Africa. So let's go take a look at those and let's take a look at model guidance and see if uh, there is an end, to, uh, an end in sight to this very quiet period that we're currently in. Even though we have dry air over the Atlantic, we still have the intertropical convergence zone that is always responsible for getting these storms rolling off of Africa and still doing its job. You can see we do have a wave rolling off of Africa right now, but um, it's very, you know, elongated and disorganized right now, just meaning it's pretty far ways away from consolidating a center and getting a fully named storm. And that's, again, one of the reasons the National Hurricane and Center just isn't watching it right now. Now, they are watching and they just don't have an area designated for it on the map, um, but uh, that can Combined with the hostile conditions in front of it, yeah, just not a whole lot having a chance right now in the Atlantic. Now, uh, let's show you what's going to happen, though, what's going to change over the coming uh, days and next week or two. And uh, remember, this map is our moisture content. So the greener the colors, the more moist it is, the more... Um, I guess beige brown colors. How about that? That sounds about right. Uh, that's the drier the air is. And as we go ahead into time, you'll notice um, things try to moisten up at moments. We do get these little waves to roll off. You can see these little spinning areas of uh, water vapor that try to get going. But then behind it, more areas of dry air get shot out into the Atlantic. And you can see here's another big pocket of dry air. And this is 10 days from now. Um, but uh, you get the idea. We're going to have some conditions that could become conducive at times, but still going to be battling other things that maybe are less conducive for development. Now, I, I will mention this. The Caribbean and Central American areas here uh, are pretty moist. They've got a lot more moisture than areas back out in the main development region where dry air is continuously getting funneled in. So that could be an area to watch. I mentioned that in the last video, um, not yesterday, but the day before. 
And that would be a region that we would want to keep a close eye on. Um, but uh, even then, nothing jumping out at us that uh, screams, you know, anything is right around the corner from developing. Uh, wind shear is another thing right now, and uh, there are other background features as well. We also have the MJO phase right now that just isn't overly conducive, uh, per se, for tropical development. Uh, and that is helping to make the wind shear a little worse out here. These red colors, that's above average wind shear. And you can see that's why homegrown development is not expected in the near term as that jet stream dipped over the U.S. West, while yes, does allow frontal systems to form and fire up some convection, absolutely just ripping apart anything that tries to form with all of this wind shear just offshore. So kind of a bit of a blanket here or a shield, if you will, protecting us right now. Uh, but elsewhere in the Atlantic, we also have some wind shear here and orange and red showing up. And um, you can see as we go further ahead into time, this is, you know, 10 days from now, 15 days from now, things don't really get a whole lot more conducive. Uh, you know, you see some little pockets of areas that try to maybe become more conducive down into the Caribbean. Again, that's an area I am monitoring. Um, but, you know, it, it's more of the same, folks. Nothing that screams a great window of opportunity for development. Now, not to say nothing will develop. Again, it is peak hurricane season, so a lot of background features. This is the warmest water temperatures that we're going to have for a while. Uh, it's the warmest um, or the deepest depth of those water temperatures, I should, I should say, and uh, all sorts of things. But just generally speaking, nothing screaming a big favorable pattern ahead for tropical development. Obviously, we'll take it, though. The longer we go with that, the better for us. Now, while all the models suggest that, let's take a look at Ensemble. Sometimes they sniff things out a little bit sooner and always great to use this time of year and check to see if they are developing anything. Here are the latest European ensembles now through about uh, 10 days from now, and you can see yeah, maybe some signs of something, but there's just not one designated strong signal. Now, some of these members try to get something developed and eventually bring it north of the islands by about 10 days from now, but honestly, that's probably only you know 20% of the European members there, and then a whole bunch of others try to get something in the main development region. But either way, one big key takeaway is nothing showing up close to the United States, and all these little squigglies you see out here are just little systems that may try to develop, but even if they did, would 99% uh, chance get pulled on out to sea and would not be a problem. So the European ensemble is not overly excited. Uh, I will mention here, notice down here, we've got a system in the Pacific and then some members trying to get something going on the Atlantic side of that. Some of our models have been hinting at a Central American gyre developing. The GFS showing it a lot more here, you can see, with a lot of activity over there. Uh, now, unfortunately for the GFS, good news for us is it has a bit of a bias where it likes to form systems down into the Caribbean and into the uh, Bay of Campeche or I think somebody said Bay of Campeche, however you want to pronounce it. I've heard both, but um, either way, the GFS is a bias where it does that and it's modeling and then it just doesn't really happen in reality a lot of times. So I'm a little skeptical right now, but it's something to watch. It is that time of the year we start watching that region and uh, the GFS also getting some stuff trying to develop out into the MDR. Doesn't really get it close to land. And either way, it also showed this with the last system that fizzled and turned into nothing. So nothing I would be overly concerned about. That's your update on the tropics. Remember, not a lot going on right now. However, we need to stay monitored to things and keep an eye on it because a lot of hurricane season left. We know the late part of September and October can just be just as active as the other months in hurricane season. So that's your update there. Let's bring things on back home and talk about the weather that's happening back in the lower 48. If you thought the tropics were quiet, wait till you look back home. Yeah, nothing happening right now. So, I mean, I could spend five minutes here looking at this map and uh, telling you about all the crazy nothingness that's going on, or we could just move on and I can show you the next map. How about that? Yeah, not, not really anything. We've got some storms over Kansas right now. That is it over the lower 48. Now, here's the big story, though. Um, it's the weather that really isn't happening that kind of is the story. We've got this big high pressure dominated. We've got drier air funneling in for many of us. Here's your muggy meter or that dew point map. Remember those um, more, we'll call it purplish, greenish colors are muggier air. And the more beige and light green colors are that drier fall-like air. And you can see many of us in these having that funnel in. You can see that frontal system start to push south and east before now kind of stalling out a along the coastline. Uh, but uh, yeah, for most of us, it's a wonderful fall like vibe this morning. In fact, we had some 20s for lows this morning up into Michigan. Uh, that's that's cold even for early September standards. That's uh, that's pretty impressive stuff. So this is the real deal, a real shot of fall air. And uh, the later we get these shots of fall air, the less likely it is that we get any big warm ups really between now and the official end of uh, summertime. Although we can get warmer temperatures even into October. Heck, some of us, uh, depending on where you're at, can even get them in the winter. We'll know, uh, I know 
here in the Carolinas. At least we can get 70s even in December. Uh, it's not completely unheard of. Uh, now, here's what it looks like on the map. We've got, here's the high pressure, and this is introducing some cold air damming into the Carolinas and Virginia, typical stuff there. Uh, but, um, uh, more importantly, it's just bringing a lot of sinking motion and not a lot of rain falling anywhere uh, over the next couple of days. I'll even time it out here for you on the Euro. And you notice uh, not a lot of rain to go around really anywhere here east of the Rockies. And our next real storm system, I mean, if you want to even call any of these a storm system, there's nothing really honestly showing up in the next 10 days that screams, hey, this is going to be a big deal. And you can see it on our vorticity map as well. Remember, it's like an energy map. Uh, right now, we've got this big dip in the jet over the east. That's what's bringing the cooler air. But again, most of the actual weather associated with it is now pushed offshore. So that one uh, kind of no longer anything to talk about. Then you notice... Keep going, keep going. We've got a big trough out west here by the weekend. Uh, that could bring some showers and storms to the Rockies, maybe. Uh, we've got another little short wave trough uh, trying to get embedded into the southeast. That could bring another shot of cooler air by the weekend, but uh, it's a very dry front, so meaning it's not likely to bring a lot of rain. And then some of the models indicating maybe a bit of a cutoff low gets into the action, but that's not seven days from now, and the model's pretty unreliable at that range with that sort of setup. So we'll see what happens, but uh, I'm not overly, again, optimistic that anything of significance is on the way over at least the next seven days. The good news, though, is it's going to stay pretty dry. You can see on the muggy meter, it stays nice. Now, the plains could start to become a little more muggy. We're going to get some flow out of the Gulf there. But uh, here east of the Mississippi, yeah, the fall-like weather looks to continue and hang on for at least the next, again, seven days, potentially even longer than that. Temperature-wise, uh, we are going to stay below average for the majority of us here into the east over the coming days. By about Wednesday, Thursday, we start to warm back up a little bit, uh, at least back to average. And in fact, it could be pretty warm here up into the Midwest and into the Northern Plains by uh, the end of this week. Uh, so there may be more summer-like weather, or at least uh, not as fall-like. But here, again, if you're in the immediate east, places like the East Coast and even the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, uh, the fall fields look to hang on for at least a good couple of days. And then well out into time, maybe we get a bit of a warm-up, but uh, again, nothing that uh, would bring any real significant weather. Uh, if you didn't believe me with the rain from just the European model, here's the Euro Ensembles. This is rainfall over a 24-hour period. So in the near term, I uh, could see some rain over places like Kansas, even up into Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, the UP, and Michigan. Other than that, folks, uh, I mean, yeah, maybe some rain up into the northern Rockies, as I mentioned, uh, into the Dakotas at times, but uh, no real systems. This is all the way through the next 10 days, and you can see a lot of us not really seeing any significant rain. I'm not to say you won't see any, but no significant storm systems that would bring any sort of flooding or anything like that uh, showing up on our model guidance. <laughs> Well, that's all I got, folks. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, yeah, that's that's the weather. Not much going on. We'll take it, though, because I'm sure by the time we get to a little bit later in hurricane season, maybe we get another active stretch or by winter season, we're going to have times where it's going to be two videos a day, probably a live stream as well, uh, which I'm looking forward to. It'll be fun to hang out with you all a little bit more on those sorts of things. But for now, we'll enjoy the quiet times and uh, keep on rolling. Y'all have a great one. Stay safe. We'll see you all next time.